Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, shalom, Chavarim. Yes, greetings, greetings, greetings. So we're going to call this one right here papacy, right? The papacy. When did the papacy start? Now, a lot of folks would believe, be naive, the rhetoric, you know, like the Roman Catholic Church, they're on top of their social media, um, disinformation, they're, they're all over the place. So we did this in another video where we looked up something and then you can see how they attribute like Christianity, where did the Pope or the papacy and Roman Catholicism, they'll say it began with... <laughs> You know, they say Christianity began with the Roman Catholic Church. And a lot of people really, really believe that. You know, even the whole Constantine thing. People believe that it was Rome, Italy. Well, actually it was Byzantium. You don't hear folks talk about Byzantium. Because what it says is that history gets written by the victor. Right? The victor, as long as the, the hunter tells a story, you know. Like the lion, you know, will never get his true props. You know what I mean? The lion of Judah, you know, the tribe, the tribe, the tribe is a group of people. Note that, check that. But here, the papacy, this is something that doesn't really get discussed. All the people talking about the Roman Catholic Church, this and that, and Babylon, this and that. Very few even mention this important historical fact and the important historical fact is that the papacy was established in 538 AD this is one thing that even on a lot of Roman Catholic sources they if you get into the detail they'll bring it out they'll they'll get into and we're going to show you this also if we get a chance right here on the Wikipedia page I think there's the papacy page because you know we've studied this and we've kind of knew this for a while. We followed up on it. But here's one of the resources. We're showing you this particular picture right here because, you know, the whole thing, they'll point to the Bible and they'll say, you see Peter, right? You see Peter in the Bible and the keys, right? Upon this rock, he built his church. And they'll say, well, it's talking about Peter, Petra, Petro, Petra, Kepha, Kepha. You know, get into the Greek, get into the um, the um, the Hebrew of his name, his is, you know, I don't know if it was a name or a nickname. You know how we have our names that our parents call us, but then we also know our different attributional names. So he's called the rock. Then they'll have this Renaissance painting, right? This Renaissance painting was all done around the time of the, um, the, the Italian Renaissance, you know, the whole Renaissance period. That's where they, it's after the whitewash. See, the whitewash is when they whitewashed and, and whited out all the, you could say, the, the black and the brown, the ethnic icons of the people of the book, the people of the Bible, Jesus, Yeshua, you know, his mother Mary, and every everybody. Basically, they whitewashed it. So they went through this whole, they call it the iconoclast phase. And then we get, you know, um, the Renaissance. You know, I call it like the Italian or the, you know, the papacy, the Roman you know, Renaissance. And this is where a lot of these particular whitewashed pictures, you know, that we tend to think, you know, this is this is what, quote, Christianity is about. And this is what they make believe. This is that cartoon. People talk about the Bible's like a cartoon, but these are like the real cartoons because actually the real Hebrew scripture is not really a cartoon. It's not a cartoon at all. It's basically you know, math and science, knowledge, you know, it gets down into some mathematicals when we start to look at the linguistic, you know, and approach it from that perspective or ciphers, you know, even the letters, you know, dealing with even physics, force and form, you know, on those particular levels. That's where the scripture really is, you know what I mean? But most ones don't know that, so I'm not going to go into that. But this is going to be some simple math that the papacy Right, was established in 538 A.D., right? what they call A.D. or C.E., Christian era or common era or Anno Domini, but 538, right? So it's barely ancient because they said ancient. How old is ancient? Well, the academics say anything that is like 1,500 years ago. So 
roughly from 2023, 1500, roughly the 538 is roughly, you know, basically ancient. Not ancient, ancient, but ancient in the academic sense. So the papacy, the papacy began in 538. Now, when did this whole Constantine, right? Now, Constantine was this was Byzantium. Like I say, it's not Roman. These two terms, terminologies get replaced, right? Replacement, not just replacement theology, but replacement terminologies. And um, Brother Reggie, in his study on Coptic Christianity, we had to, you know, like thumbs that up and also, you know, show some support to that because that's a vital area, especially in the so-called, you know, what's referred to as the black conscious community or even those who might be, you know, pro-Kemetic or, or other areas of ancient black and African history. This is an important area to understand what occurred then and also to be able to read through the disinformation. The disinformation goes to these pictures. So that's why I'm showing this particular picture, because this picture is also part of the disinfo campaign. In fact, the icons was the um, the literature for the illiterate, the icons, you know, these icons. Most couldn't read, right, in various different periods of time. We're not, you know, great readers. So they use the pictures, the icons, the statues, the this, the that, you know, to tell the, the story. So as they told the story, you know, and selectively, you know, quoted and misquoted areas of scripture, they wove this whole narrative that makes people believe. Even a lot of Roman Catholics believe this is in the video we did about Jabari. You know, he was trying to say that it was it was an Ethiopian church under Rome. And we're like, Rome, Rome what? And then people say, well, you know, there's Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. Well, actually, that was Byzantium. And if we get into the details of it, let's let's get into details of it, some details right here, but let's point out some points of reference right here. Now you see we got a whole lot to share. Probably not gonna be in this particular video right here. This is a book right here we would like ones to check out, right? Because it's it's little, but it's taller, it's small, but it's very, very important. In this particular document, chapter three, it speaks about the beast described, the beast according to Revelation described, right? Remember the papacy began in 538 AD, right? And Vatican, if you ever look up the, the whole thing about Vatican, I don't know if ones and ones have, but if you looked up the thing about the Vatican, like when the Vatican, the Vatican is basically almost like 20th century, according to the information and according to the facts and the evidence of it. You know, Vatican, Vaticanus, divining, is said to be divining serpent. But the papacy, this whole papacy thing. I was going to actually go to this particular page. And if we have this page still open, it'll be best maybe just to go to this particular page right now. Okay, so what we do, you know what we do? We like to go to the etymology, papacy. It's a noun, Eti etym online. In late 14th century, that's like the 1300, Papacie, 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 you see how they spell it, Papacie, C-A, C-A, Papacie, right? The office or jurisdiction of a pope from medieval Latin, Papatia, 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 papal office from late Latin, Papa. Now, Papa is what they say is pope. Now, what's interesting is that Abba, and we have Ababa and Abba, Abba in the Hebrew, right? Abba and also Ababa, Baba. We say Baba, Baba even today, right? So if you flip the B around, you get a P just to overstand a little bit of that Tower of Babel confusion of tongues thing, right? So Papa, Baba, like I say, Daddy. So we're saying Daddy, but as a title, right? Coming down to the Greco-Roman, this world system is Pope, right? Old English had... Pop dumb, pop dumb. Ain't that something? Pop dumb, pop dumb, right? P A P D O M in this sense, meaning, quote, the succession or line of popes. The system of ecclesiastical government based upon authority of the Bishop of Rome. I want you to keep that in mind. Where is Rome? On the map, where is Rome? So, a lot of ones, I don't think they even understand 
You know, they haven't gone into the details. When they talk about Constantine and this whole Christianity thing, Council of Nicaea, they don't recognize they're talking about Byzantium. Byzantium, right? What some people call the second Rome, but then from Byzantium, they had to reconquer Rome. So it's not the same place, first of all. So we're talking about papacy, we're talking about Bishop of Rome, right? Rome, Italy, right? Constantinople, Turkey, the ancient Hittite lands, we need to understand that history in context, right? So this so-called terminology, popdom, is from the 1540s, right? The Bishop of Rome. But then let's go down a little further. Entries related, entries linking to papacy. Now we have Pope, right? The Bishop of Rome as head of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, another point right here is if you don't know, there's a difference between Catholic and Roman Catholic. That's where your intellectual cognitive dissonance might come in, right? Not because of, you know, what you're looking for, the truth, but you might be missing over the truth because you're thinking it all means the same thing. It's not. There was Catholic or kataholos. It's a Greek term. Not Latin, originally a Greek term. Kataholos mean universal. That means to say, like if I and I is a Rastafari, I'm here, I'm black American in America. That means that we're all part of one universal body, whether one is in Jamaica, the Caribbean, Africa, Europe, Western Europe, England, Asia, wherever, Australia, South America, wherever, Hawaii. That means we all as Rastafari, universally were part of one body. That's what the term kataholos was, to use uh, Brother Reggie's um, words, it was like replaced or co-opted by Rome. That's what they put Roman first. Over that, they put Roman Catholic first. So people think that Roman equals Catholic and Catholic equals Rome. Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 it does not. No, it does not. So when you find Roman Catholic, this is that which has replaced. That study on Coptic Christianity that um, Brother Reggie recently, today he, he presented, I don't know when you'll get to check this out, but hopefully soon, you know, um, presented is excellent with at least bringing out this aspect that serious scholars, maybe not our generation so much so, you know, unless they can think differently, but definitely the youths hopefully will pick up. You know what I mean? Will pick up because it's a definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So we have all this information, but yet we can't figure it out. The information, you said knowledge is power. Could we have information, we gotta make knowledge out of it. We gotta study it, we gotta reason on this. Right? We got to really understand and see, see, seek to find out if these things are really true in the context. See, when we study history, it's like saying about different time periods. So people will talk about, oh, this happened then and that happened then. And you'll think that it happened at the same time, that there's no intervening time. There's no other thing going on. And if we read the, the system, what the system, the shit system, the Babylon system, what they put out, as we did when we looked up Roman Catholic, we just Googled it. And all the sources basically is talking points, right, of the Vaticanian, the Roman Catholic institution is their own talking points. So the Jesuits and the rest of them, they are doing, they're on top of their job. But serious scholars, you know, can see the, the rewrite, you know, the revision. So basically a lot of ancient so-called Christian Christianity history is revision. They have revisioned it. Right, they have rewrote it. Right, but here, Pope is defined as the Bishop of Rome as head of the Roman Catholic Church. Quote end quote. Remember, this etym online. We're dealing with etymology. We're dealing with things that can be sourced based on available evidence. This is circa 1200, from Old English Papa in the ninth century, from Church Latin. Get that right there. It's not just Latin, but it's the Church's use of Latin. And which church uses Latin? The Roman Catholic Church. Papa, right? Bishop or Pope. In classical Latin, in classical Latin, it means tutor. Think about that. In classical Latin, it means tutor from the Greek papis, 
So here we have the Greco-Roman thing going on, right? Pompous, which is patriarch or bishop. So now as we connect it with the Bible, if there's a connection, it would be that bishop idea in the Bible. Originally, it's father. So that father figure of a, of a church or a group of like believers is like that one who is the bishop. Bishop actually means a shepherd, right? But it's taken as a papa or baba or father figure. Check. Okay, now check this out right here. All right, let's put this on the screen so that we can get this and take a screenshot of this because this is important. This next paragraph, it says applied to bishops. Now remember, a bishop is like a shepherd. We get another terminology, they say pastor. A pastor is like a shepherd, right? Applied to bishops of Asia Minor. Check, Asia Minor is not Rome, Italy. Get a map. Asia Minor is not Rome, Italy. We're talking about the modern country or the territory called Turkey today, right? Known as Constantinople and in ancient times, biblical times, as a territory of the Hittites, right? Who was a tribe, according to the Bible, of the Canaanites, but applied to bishops of Asia Minor and taken as a title by the Bishop of Alexandria. Wait, wait, hold up. Where is Iskandaria? Where is Alexandria? Isn't that the place established by Alexander, right? In part of the territory of the ancient Smaitawi or Kemet, if you please, the Het Kapita or Egypta, right? Gibbet, known as Egypt, right? So the Bishop of Alexandria. So now we're talking about Egypt. What's the quote Coptic, quote unquote, connection here? Circa, notice the date, circa 250, right? Circa 250. Now, 250 is before 538, where the papacy was established. By the time we get the papacy established, like in the 530s, and then we keep moving forward historically, this is what we get today. So the cover-up is what ones like Brother um, Reggie was seeking to bring out. You know, like the transition of the kind of rewriting an adaptation for political, social, political, you know, quote, religious, end quote, purposes. But we get to circa 250, right? 250, because this now links with the whole thing about Ethiopia. Now, wait, if Constantinople did all this stuff with Christianity in the 300s, and then a little bit later on, we get, uh, get King Azana of Aksum, Right, and the connection with the Ethiopian, we say Christianity or the Orthodox or the official, the, the state religion, as it were, from the time of of of, of Azana, right? And there's a lot of disinformation out there as well, you know, coming from someone who's supposed to be more conscious, but are they really scholars? Can we really point to this evidence? Can we put it together? Right? So we get three hundred in the three hundreds A D C E, what have you. Right. Then we get 530, 538, the papacy established. But if you read Roman Catholic sources and resources out there, they'll tell you it goes all the way back to Peter. Right. But then as we go deeper in our study and research, they will even say and acknowledge they don't even know for the 300 years who were those early so-called bishops. See, they were not bishops of Rome. Right? They were bishops of the Nazarene and the Christianoi faith that was truly kataholos, universal, but Rome was not ruling it. See, when Rome put Roman Catholic, they ruled it. Right, So-called Christianity doesn't come from Roman Catholicism in that sense, but has been hijacked coming down to us today by this Roman Catholicism. But what is missing is the true history of how that went on, what really went on. Notice what it says in the Western church. Uh oh, see the Western church is where we get the Roman church. So what the Eastern, this is what connects with the whole, the Coptic on one hand, and then what occurred in Constantinople with Constantine. But remember all of that was almost 200 years before, right, the papacy was established. And if you look up Vatican, we're going to do that in just one moment. 
In fact, let's just look up this right here, Vatican. When did Vatican start? I want you to see the, the information that's out there. Information, this information. When did Vatican start or put found it, right? Put, let's put found it right there, found it right there. And we're going to go back to this page. Uh-oh, look at this. Vatican City was founded, right, in 1929. Now, they'll say the city, but what about the Vatican? We talk about the Vatican, we're talking about Vatican City. Vatican City State was founded on the 11th of February, 1929. The King of Kings of Ethiopia on the throne of David coronated November 2nd, right, 1930. But Rastafari was crowned king to that Solomonic, Davidic, prophetic, right, you know, throne, right, October 20. October, not, not October so much, but 1928. We'll get into the actual 1928. So we have that black man crowned king, as Reverend James Morris Webb said. This is what Marcus Garvey later on will pick up on, right? And, you know, a black king being crowned, you know, day of deliverance. But originally we have the Chicago mystic Reverend James Morris Webb saying those words. And then in 1928, and Rastafari was known to especially the black people in the Americas and the Caribbean even before that, right? So even before the Rastafari movement, the man Rastafari was already looked at from black people's perspective, especially in the West and in the East, right, in these messianic terms. And Vatican, Rome, Mussolini, the fascists, the Antichrist, the devil, Babylon knew that and understood that. That's why we get the fascist invasion, the blessing of bombs, you know, poison mustard gas upon those Ethiopians, are you not as the children, the Ethiopian, the male children of Israel? Check. See what happened in 70 AD? So you have to know the history. So 11 February 1929, following the signing of the Lateran Pax, keep that word in mind, that name, Lateran Pax, because there's a Constantine connection, right? And we can see the three card Monty. So early Christianity is like, uh, becomes a th Roman. Christianity, Rome, Catholicism is like a three-card Monty, right? But keep Lateran in mind. Lateran pacts between the Holy See and Italy located within Vatican City is the apostolic palace. So they make you think it's like the apostles in the Bible. You see the, 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 the sleight of hand? The residence of the Pope. Now you see that right there, that the Vatican City is 1929, then we tell the papacy is 538. This is after the Coptic Church. This is after the Ethiopian Church. Check. This is after also the Egyptian Church, the Armenian Church, the Syrian Church, the Indian Church, the Ethiopian Church, and the Coptic Church. I'm speaking about the Oriental Sister Churches that all pulled away from the Constantine and that movement that was going on, that three-card Monty, right, early Christianity. So let's go back to this page right here. Now, down here, this second paragraph right here where it says, this term Pope, that originally meant patriarch or bishop, but in the, in the Latin can also mean like Papa, like Daddy, right, applied to bishops of Asia Minor. So we're talking about that whole region over there, Turkey, and also the Levant area, right? And taken as a title by the bishop, right, the, the, the shepherd of Alexandria in Egypt, thus even the Coptic connection, circa 250, right? So 250 is before the Council of Nicaea. 250 is before, right, um, the Ethiopian, Zana. 250 is before, well before, way before 538 and the papacy being established in 538 AD. That's why the next line says, in the Western church, applied especially to the Bishop of Rome. In the Western church, it applied especially, zoom in on that word, especially to the Bishop of Rome, right? Rome, Italy. See, Rome, Italy. Most don't distinguish Byzantium, right, and Asia Minor from Rome, 
And what gets lost in that shuffle is Alexandria. And what further gets lost in that shuffle is original Hebrew or the Nazarene movement that was coming out of what ones might say the Hebrews, you know, and the Israelites and we the black Jews of that first century time, right? Applied especially to the Bishop of Rome since the time of Leo the Great. Wait, hold, hold, hold up. So in the Western church, this title of Pope Papa, right, was only applied or especially applied to the Bishop of Rome since the time of Leo the Great in 440 to 461. See, they didn't establish this paper C thing, but they started to first establish the use of this title that others were using before Rome, Italy, and therefore well before the Roman Catholic Church. The great, the first great asserter of its privilege Right, Leo the Great, the first great asserter of its privilege. But wait, it was already being used right, by the Bishop of Alexandria and the bishops of Asia Minor, two locations. One in what's known as Turkey or Constantinople, right, and the other in what we can say part of Northern Africa, a.k.a. Egypt, right, and claimed exclusively. Look at it, claimed exclusively. You see what it says claimed exclusively? claimed exclusively that means that others were using this before them and doing this before them and they basically effectively said that we only have the right to use this even though you just you done jacked this from somebody else you're denying them who were doing it before you were doing it right and no doubt also the right way to jack this and do it the wrong way right buy them from 1073 look at that 1073. So all this is some late stuff. We just showed you Vatican City, 1929. Just showed you Vatican City. Now, if we go back to this other page over here, the history of the papacy, we're going to show you something right here. If you go to the Wikipedia page, the history of the papacy, but they don't want to tell you 538 AD overtly. They don't tell you that, but that is the truth of the matter. Five. 38 AD, the papacy, the, right? The Roman Catholic papacy was established. Vatican City, 1929, February 11th, 1929, right? So the history of the papacy, the office held by the Pope as the head of the Catholic Church. You see how they, 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 they're, they're real slick with it. They didn't say the Roman Catholic Church. They say the Catholicos Church, right? Kataholos. Remember that term is Greek, but then it was adapted, adopted into Latin. And then they put the title Roman on it. That's, that's the takeover. That's the hostile takeover. So what the Romans did, or the, you can say the Europeans if you want to go there, but what they did is a hostile takeover right, of an ancient tradition that had its roots right, in Africa and Asia right, among black and brown groups of people. Just to point that out spans from the time of Peter. Notice the language, spans. They're very slick with it. Spans from the time of Peter to the present. Because when they say Peter, they can then go to the Bible, point out the keys, and then they'll point to the Vatican flag with the keys on it. And they say, see the keys? See the keys there? Or what they might actually do is use this picture here and see, here is, here is the one they call Jesus, right? Right, giving the keys to somebody they, they call Patar or, or somebody they want to make you believe is Peter. Right, see, you see the picture? So even the illiterates saw the picture there, the, 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 the papal priests, right, and Jesuits, they preach it, right? What more do you need? So for most Catholics, that's their proof. This is their proof here, right? But for ones that can think objectively, Right, you'll recognize that first sentence there is 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 gene. It's such clever writing. The history of the papacy, the office held by the Pope as the head of the Catholic Church. They didn't say Roman, right? Spans from the time of Peter. So if you say, well, when did the Roman Catholic Church begin? They'll say it began with Peter. But yet, let me show you. Yet they'll say that they don't know anything about these bishops for almost three centuries, three hundred years. The first three hundred years. What? The first 300 years, they don't know nothing about because we just showed you with Leo the Great, right? He now co-ops his terminology, 
right? It's almost like when we talk about hip hop or black music or black expression or invention, how it's taken over. And it's almost in the very same way because we still are under this Greco-Roman world system, scripturally, biblically, one might say Babylon. Moreover, many of the bishops of Rome in the first three centuries of the Christian era are obscure. You know why they're obscure? Because they was not white Italians, so-called, right? They were not so-called white people. They were not whitewashed, right? That's why they obscure. And because in their coming up, the Roman Catholic Church coming up, you see why could not begin with Rome? Because Rome was the oppressor. Rome was the enemy. Rome was the doer of the deed of crucifixion. And they say Antichrist will come from the people who crucified Christ. Some people think it was the black, the Jews, right? But it wasn't them. Yeah, they wanted him. The leadership wanted him dead. The Pharisees and scribes wanted him dead, right? And the people went along with their religious leaders, just like today among our people, black people, along with their religious leaders. See, the Sharptons, the Jesse Jacksons, always out there. Then later on, they say, well, we knew that they would not. Such so you let us down this wrong way and say you knew it already. All right. Moreover, many of the bishops of Rome in the first three centuries of the Christian era are obscure figures. See, see how big that point is? So many of the bishops of Rome, because there were no bishops of Rome. <laughs> there were no bishops of Rome. Right? There were no bishops of Rome in the first three centuries. There were bishops, but they were not bishops of Rome. They were bishops of the Nazarene, the Christianoi, who were universal or kataholos. The term in the Greek is kataholos. Remember that term was jacked as Catholic, and then he put Roman. They said most of Peter's successors in the first three centuries following his life suffered martyrdom among the members of Along with, along with members of their flock in periods of persecution. You know what they don't tell you? Persecution by who? Who were the ones in the first 300 years being persecuted by? By the same ones who destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, right? And killed many of the Jews, the Judeans, and, and took many of them as slaves, right? And many fled into parts of Africa and elsewhere. They don't tell you that. They say most of Peter's successes in the first three centuries following his life suffered martyrdom along with members of their flock in periods of persecution by Rome. By Rome, because if they put by Rome right there, you'd be like, wait, hold on for a moment. You'd be like, hold on for a moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Either make the tree good and the fruit good or the tree evil and the fruit evil. Don't say well, it was a good tree. Where did this evil fruit come from? It came from a replacement tree, another tree, a false tree. Now notice this part right here. Just, just touch on this right here. During the early church, the bishops of Rome enjoyed no temporal power until the time of Constantine. Pause. Why do they keep talking about bishops of Rome? Right? When we, we know the papacy was not established until 538 A.D., and it was Leo the Great who first asserted exclusive use of the title of Pope or Bishop, right, which is actually being used by the bishops of Alexandria, the Coptics, right, as well as some in Asia Minor. But all of this was before Constantine of Byzantium, the Byzantium, what some would like to call, they call it the Eastern Roman Empire, but it's known as Byzantium. See, by them calling it, they claim it. What is it called? Name it and claim it. This is what they do. So they said the bishops of Rome enjoyed no temporal power until the time of Constantine. There were no bishops of Rome in that sense. It was not about the bishops of Rome. Like we look in the Bible and talk about bishops. Are they talking about bishops of Rome? They wouldn't be talking about Rome, bishops of Rome. Rome was the persecutor, the centurions of Pope Paul. You know, you know the centurion that was... They was the one that gave permission, right, basically and carried out the execution of Yeshua Hanotsri, of Jesus of Nazareth, right? After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, wait, wait, hold on, the Middle Ages, 476. So wait, the Western, so now they're claiming there's an Eastern Roman Empire, 
Byzantium. The papacy was influenced by the temporal rulers of the surrounding Italian peninsula. They're just talking nonsense there. You see, but notice they only are talking about Rome, 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 Rome. And that's, that's part of the historical Christian problem when we start to look at what Rome did, even coming up to modern times and the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, right? which, according to history, would have a primacy when we talk about Christ and Christian things, but they never focus on it. Notice that, right? They always throw shade on that. Right? That's why we had to, you know, give a thumbs up to Brother Reggie for even, you know, venturing on a study of Coptic Christianity and even putting some of the context there. You know, what Rome did, Rome wanted to assert supremacy over, over all. This is what brings the biblical kind of prophetic thing, if you know the truth, into a good perspective. Simply, accurately, practically applied. Right? So the Middle Ages, 476. We can show you right there in history and in the Bible where the Jews, the Yehudi, were, were kicked out of Rome, Italy, right? Because they were afraid the Roman Empire that was running at that time, I think it was um, um, Claudius, I Claudius, a great series. Check it out, I Claudius. You need to study things like that so you can put, you know, history together. You know, in Claudius' time, they kicked them out. I think Acts of the Apostles talk about it. They was not having any any part with this Christian thing. They were persecuting Christians, grabbing them from wherever in the Roman Colosseum, bread and circus. So, so what are you talking about of Rome? Rome wasn't on that. What happened was, like we said, the three card, the card shuffle. It was a card shuffle. They were persecuting the Christians, so to speak, the Nazarene, the Christiana. They were being persecuted by Rome. So when they say during the early church, the Bishop of Rome enjoyed no temporal power, right? That is kind of true. But what's not true is that they were bishops of Rome in that sense. They were persecuting the early church. They crucified the whole namesake. But then 300 years later, right? You know what I'm saying? 300 years later, you know, it's like you fight, they, they fight against it and then they co-opt it. Look, look what happened with hip hop. We use hip hop and musical forms and, and blues and rock and roll and all these things as just examples, all the inventions. You know, they, they co-opt it, they, they, they put it under their law and they basically say, we, we, we did this. This is American, it's not black people, it's American music. America did that music instead of those people in the Americas. You know, some Aboriginal and some brought over here, right? So the papacy was influenced by all these other ones. You see where they go down, all these other ones. But you know what they leave out? The real movement, right, right among, we could say, the Hebrews and even the Ethiopians. Because see, the whole Ethiopian and Coptic and black people connection, people don't know that Christianity or the early Christianity, the real teaching was very much popular among African and black people. Right. At this earlier day. Right. So and there was war going on. Right. Through the Roman Empire, the temporal powers against these other peoples. Right. That's why you notice what they do. They zoom all the way up in the next paragraph to 1048 to 1252. Right. You know, and they, and they, and they jump around in this article right here. Right. Notice what you do in this paragraph. Early Christianity, the first words, what they say. Roman Catholics recognize the Pope as both the successor to Peter and the first bishop of Rome. The first bishop of Rome, according to so-called legend, right, he was he was crucified upside down at a time that they was crucifying, they were crucifying so-called Christians. Right in, in, in their sports, blood and sports game in the Roman arenas for hundreds of years. This is a historical fact. But what they're saying is that Roman Catholics, you know, those who they got, right, who they have kind of, you know, had to drink the, the Kool-Aid and eat the crackers, the wafers, you know what I mean? They go for this right there in spite of history and they'll defend this, you know what I mean? And they have defended this. One more point right here, brothers and sisters, because I like to share this right here to give a more true context to the 538. 
you know, three card Monte Christianity. That's that's what's going on. The three card Monte Christianity. Let's go to this chapter and we're going to go through some of the picks right here. So let's stop for a moment. The beast and the beast system described how when the Bible is properly interpreted, we put things in their proper context. We can even see the legitimacy to, you know, the scriptures when it's properly. But the first thing you have to do is you have to cut out all of this uh, whitewash, so to speak. Stop. If you haven't read chapter two, they say the beast identified. Don't read this chapter. But we're going to go ahead right here. Let's take a look at this thing to make sure there's no mistake. Right. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority, according to Revelations chapter what? 13 verse two. Emperor Justinian, right? Emperor Justinian, look up Emperor Justinian. He gave Rome to the Pope when he decreed that the Pope should be over all the Christian churches of the earth. So there's an Emperor Justinian, right, that gave Rome to the Pope, right? So it wasn't always there. Rome was the persecutor. Remember, it was, it was the Roman Empire, Remember all that was going, it's right there in your Bibles. I mean, how can people be so silly? You know, because of the indoctrination, that Kool-Aid is strong. Emperor Justinian gave Rome to the Pope when he decreed that the Pope should be over all the Christian churches of the earth. So that means black, brown, African, Asian, anybody, everybody must be under Rome because this is when the Roman Empire fell from the Caesar days and they wanted to keep that power play and they said okay this Christianity thing this is the best way so we gotta hostilely take this over and that's exactly what they did so Justinian and the establishment of the papacy in 538 AD when the emperor right the Kaiser Khazar Kaiser Kaisar, Kaiser, that's the Roman terminology, Kaiser, Kazar, when the emperor's general Be Belisarius drove the Ostrogoths from Rome, the Ostrogoths from Rome. Now, how do we know this? Think of the word Ostrogoths. I don't know if you know how to spell that, but here we're going to show you Ostrogoths. Let's go to the first part of this right here. Remember, we was over here and notice right here where it says right here, Ostrogothic papacy. Is this word right there? It's that word right there. Ostrogothic papy, uh, uh, papacy. Let's just go here. Ostrogothic papy, papacy. F 493 to 537. Boom. There we go. Here's where the connection of, of history, right? And fact checking this history, right? So five, they say 537, the Ostrogothic end. So what began? The papacy. In 538 AD, when the emperor's general Belisarius drove the Ostrogoths from Rome, from Rome, Italy, right? Rome gave him his seat. Bible prophecy predicted it hundreds of years before it happened. Now, what happened from 538? Let's bring this prophecy all the way forward. You see, some of the ones and ones, a lot of black people that were pro-Ethiopian, the king of kings, Hala Selassie, the Lion of Judah back then, they understood this prophecy. They understood some of the basics that a lot of people, right, that might have gone to church or have churchy folk in their family, don't really understand for themselves. So they, they miss something. From 538 AD, the papacy ruled for exactly 1,260 years until 1798 when something incredible happened the pope was taken prisoner so we get from 538 a.d the papacy ruling coming out of rome italy right for 1260 years until we get to 1798 1798 when something incredible happened the pope was taken prisoner napoleon's general berthier Remember Napoleon? Napoleon's a part of this kind of history. Napoleon's general Berthier captured the Pope and took him to France, right? This is a deadly wound. Talking about this deadly wound. Remember we showed you when was Vatican City established? They talk about the Lateran, right? The whole Lateran connection. And let me just give you the Lateran connection right here in this particular article before they might try to change it up, right? Lateran. 
Let's find keyword on this page. Let's go to Lateran, right? Lateran, right? Let's go to Lateran. So Lateran is six times here, right? Lateran Treaty. Let's go up here to the first time. Is this Lateran? You see right here, they talk about this thing called this donation of Constantine. They say it's a forgery, fictional, right? Never occurred. Constantine did hand over the Lateran Palace to the Bishop of Rome, and around 310 AD began the construction of the Basilica of Constantine in Germany called Aula Palatina, right? So there's a connection here with the Lateran Palace that was said to have been given by Constantine. That's important. Remember the deadly wound? We're talking about the deadly wound right here, and here we're bringing it up to modern days and why the fascist invasion, right, of Ethiopia, the king of kings, conquering line of the tribe of Judah is biblically, prophetically significant and black people, so-called Negroes in the Americas, understood that a hundred years ago. But now with all the technology and knowledge and information, many don't get it, the significance of this and how these things connect together. So that deadly wound, the papacy had reigned exactly 1,260 years. Now, see, that's important. Because a time and a time and half a times that calculation biblically, could it have just been coincident? Why did Berthier do it? Napoleon wanted to rule the world. If I rule the world, right? People do want to repeat like, like Napoleon, right? I wonder, right? The papacy stood in his way. The papacy stood in Napoleon's way. I wonder if they knew that they were fulfilling prophecy, that even the Hebrew, the Hebraic, right, and the black Judaic prophecy in spite of themselves, the Lion of Judah prophecy. Quote, and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. The beast is a system, the beast system in Revelation 13 and 3. So the Roman question tonight was a thing of the past and the Vatican was at peace with Italy in affixing the autographs, the signing off to the memorable document, healing the wound. Extreme cordiality was displayed on both sides between Mussolini and within the Vatican, the papal powers. San Francisco Chronicle, February 11th, 1929. This is all, see what says Mussolini? Mussolini, the fascist invasion. That's why black people understood back then what was at stake and rallied to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Because they said, wait, this is the tribe. We're talking about people, black people like ourselves. They've been pulling the, the, the wool over our eyes for so long. Look, heal wound of many years, 1,260 years. And who is right there at the heart of it? Benito Mussolini. And here's a quote right here, just to share this one right here. This is the biblical verse, right? This is symbolically, you know, according to, you know, the word picture of what kind of it looks like, how it comes down to us today, what Revelation talk about and putting that in picture. But in 1929, the Italian government recognized Vatican City as an independent state. So the Pope became king. Once again, the Pope was king. Now, remember, this was one year after Rastafari McConan was crowned Negus Tafari, right? And one year before Negus Neges, the king of kings and 72 nations bend the knee to the black king. But here, on the other hand, here's what was going on in the background prophetically. In 1929, the Italian government recognized Vatican City as an independent state. Once again, the Pope was king. On March 9th, 1929, he said, he said, the peoples of the entire world are with us. The San Francisco Chronicle published an account of the pact signing on the front page of its newspaper. It actually read like this. Mussolini and Gaspari, right? Let's go over here. Let's show you this right here. Mussolini and Gaspari, right? It's right here. You can see it like right there. Mussolini and Gaspari signed historic Roman pack. Notice when they put that Roman on there, they played a little shift 
Catholic Church? Did they know what we're talking about? Then we say Roman Catholic Church will take it over now, right? It actually read like this. Mussolini and Gaspari signed historic pact. Healed wound. Healed wound. is down right there. Healed wound of many years. Some say that's fantastic. No, that's the reality. That's the really real, the real ism ism, right? The Bible prophesied that its wound would be healed and the newspaper confirmed it in the exact same words. Though this great organization was not officially established till 538, right? 538, the papacy was not officially established, right? Until when? 538 AD. The Apostle Paul, Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the Apostle Paul, right? He saw forces at work that were preparing the way. What was going on back there, right, that he could have seen this, right? And we can get into a little bit more on this, but how now this now links, right? It says, after Yeshua According to the scripts, went back to heaven. The early church grew rapidly under the Baraka, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. You know, and then they, they insert Holy Ghost. You know how they do that ghost thing, right? And the ghost and the spirit, two different, right? Yeshua had predicted the treatment of his people, that his people were to receive. Yeshua said that his people would receive such treatment, and this is how we'll know who his people are. So now notice the connection how this tin pot Caesar Mussolini and notice what's going on. Church and state, right? In 1929, 1929. So who becomes the first Vic? The black Christ, right? What do you mean, Yadin? The black Christ. Christ is anointed, that anointed king of kings upon the throne of great King David, 72 nations. This is a big thing. This is a real world thing. Right? You may not recognize it today because you lost in the source. Right? Don't want to recognize the boss. Right? Get caught up on the Roman Catholic floss. But in Matthew 24, 9, it says, They shall deliver you up to be afflicted. So after he signed this ladder and treaty, who was afflicted? In real world, it was black people. Right? So-called Negro people. Could he refer to Ethiopians as Negroes? Black people. Right? The Ethiopians, are you not as the children of the Ethiopian and the male children of Israel? Right? They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and y'all shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Why do you think his majesty went before what? The league? They had a league. They were in league together. The legions, the league of nations. Right? Look what happened to some careless Ethiopians. They saluting, right? Benito Mussolini. Right? Ain't nothing new. Right? This is what they sought to come in with. We look at the flags. This is why the flags are very, very important. Right? Some like to choose this flag for Lion of Judah, LOJ Society. They say, uh, 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 uh. This is not our flag. Right? This is more like it. This is our flag. Cross and crown. Cross and crown. No cross, no crown. But this is it. This is it. Right? This is it for I and I. And, of course, this. Right. Let's go through some of these a little bit later on. But here we go. The invasion, the Roman invasion of Kush. <laughs> right. The Roman and the Roman Catholic invasion. The bombs were even blessed. Right. The bombs were even blessed. They even blessed the bombs. The Pope blessed the bombs because he had an agreement. Why do you think Mussolini was able to go so hot? And just went straight through with that. And nothing stopped it. Right? Because they said it. The Pope said it at that time. All the nation. Because Ethiopian church was one of the last holdouts. Was one of the last holdouts. And still had enough ancient truth there to confound the B system. Right? But did they even know that they were fulfilling prophecy? Right. So we can get into these details of the invasion, how all these things go together to gather our people back then. Right. Black people, they understood these things. That's why they rallied to the cause of Haile Selassie, the first, the lion of the tribe of Judah. You know, what I mean, we understood right, that connection right, of 
Are ye not as the children of Ethiopians and we as the children of Israel? We understood those connections there, right? And we didn't refer to as Abyssinia. Someone will push that Abyssinia thing. It's like they're in bed with the fascists. Think about it. Defend Ethiopia, Obia. If you don't know the linguistic of Ethiopia, then don't be trying to go for the Greek, the Greek okie doke, right? Defend Ethiopia against Italian fascism, Romanist fan. Listen, they were already in the Daily News, they were already to give half of Ethiopia to Standard Oil to show the whole Babylon, the corporate, you know, game of Babylon, you know, corporatism. You know what I mean? The isms and schisms from that time. What about the Moors? Let's put that in perspective. Who can speak to the this whole Moor issue? Is it someone like, um, who's that brother right there? You know, um, Tahaka? <laughs> you know, is he the one to speak to this on his platform? Moorish world? I know he, he he's, he's a defender of it. Can put this in perspective. Maybe these were not true Moors or whatnot. Right, but definitely Cyrus Sutton said he had lighted some fire on that, put some things in perspective. Right, but this is not to throw the baby out with the bath water, you know. And then we can show you some other propaganda they're doing. This was their propaganda, this is the comic books they was giving them, you know, to rally them against these black people. Notice how they were showing the black people, right, just like Negroes. Right, because in the old dictionary, that Zonda Van dictionary, some Israelites going after, that's bogus. Right, it has some true things, but concerning that whole Ethiopian, it doesn't really bring out the full truth. It's just that maybe Kushites, that might be more, a little more accurate, but not when you say Ethiopian. If you don't know it, you shouldn't speak on it. You know, have someone who can speak on it, speak on it. Right, signs of our time. So some understood the great signs, and all this will lead, right, to the world war. Right, and as his majesty prophesied, the match was struck. Right in Ethiopia, but the flames burned Europe. They laughed at him, right? They laughed at the king, but he got the last laugh because the flames and the fire burned up Europa, burned up Europe. This is what the Italians were trying to do to get the Negroes, look, the, the free ones, right, that had that ancient truth about the Bible and Christianity and even the, the Jews, right? They wanted to, it, it was all, uh, yo, on this one right here, stop putting the Martin, the Martin, put the line of Judah flag. It wasn't this one with the star. You know, it wasn't that star flag right there. It wasn't that. An honorable mention of even our people from over here, like John C. Robinson. You know, also his link with the Ethiopian World Federation, Chicago, big up, big up. You know what I mean? Need to make these connections, right? And then we can bring it all down to these latter days and time. You know, the sickle. Right, dropping in the sickle, the day the angels cried. So right here, you can see right here how this right here, and and look who was, be, you know, look who was in the center of it, right? That black man and those black people, right? Because already they knew that there was a strong Ethiopian identification, right, with our scholars over here, you know, in the Americas. Many of them you haven't heard about, but hopefully you will, you know, um hear about these and those all right and when his majesty spoke before them right and warned them why right? gather all nations that's a prophecy in the scripture too first time we get to see the league of nations and then right after that the united nations right if you go to zephaniah zephaniah chapter three my determination is to gather all nations from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. You have all of that right there in the prophecy and also in the reality. You see over there, they beheaded people, right? Just like the Bible says, they will behead many ones and ones. You know, it's not for children, but just the, the accuracy, right, of the warning, the scriptural, the biblical warning. Right? And what's connected with fascism is basically Romanism, the League of Gentiles, the League of Nations. We have all of these prophetic links right, right here. How Harlem came out in defense of Ethiopia, not Abyssinia, Ethiopia. Right? Black America's fight against the Italian invasion of Ethiopia. Right? That Romanist invasion of Ethiopia. Very, very interesting even what happened in, in Harlem. 
right? And in certain areas where, you know, blacks and, and we say Italians and the mob, that's, that's a whole other interesting part, right, of our story, of our history, right? And to break down, a breakdown on these things right here, right, the Sunday law is where we're getting some of this from, but then just following up elsewhere. So, my brothers and my sisters, this is just a little bit right here, just putting the full picture together. When did the papacy, right? When did the papacy, right? When did the papacy, what are we going to say, begin, right? According to the history, we get the papacy around, what, 530, 538, 538, you know, 538. Where can we seal this up right here? We'll just seal this up with this for right now, brothers and sisters. The papacy right here, 538. And the healing of the deadly wound and the sacrifice of the blameless Ethiopians. You know, Ethiopia stretched forth a hand. Ethiopia, this man, right? This man, this man was born there. So the papacy is not as old, right, as you might think or have been made to believe. We'll just end it with this one right here. Yes. Oh, here. You see the Pope blessing the Italian bombs and stuff like that. You know, what kind of church does that, especially to other Christians? All right. Christians fighting against Christians. That's like Antichrist.